Listings is the name of the game. Always be closing. Everybody wants to get more listings. Everybody wants to work with more sellers. On today's video, I'm going to share my three best sources for listing opportunities that works for me now. Every time we sell something, when we represent the seller, and sometimes when we represent the buyer, but the messaging changes, we send out a mailer to roughly 200 to 300 neighbors. If it's a condo complex, it's only in the condo complex. If it's a single family home, it's going to be in an area where we can pull the closest 200 neighbors. We use a Remind through MLS. You probably have access to Remind as well. It's easy to, to search, it's easy to pull the list and target the list through the mail. The message we send to the 200 or 300 uh, neighbors is we saw the house, this and that, uh, or uh, the family hired us to represent them in the sale of the house. Right now the contract is pending or we just sold the house for a lot of money and one day, whatever the situation is, we kind of describe the situation. There's still a lot of buyers on the market looking for a home like yours. If you're interested, please give me a call. So we will send out that type of letter. It will probably pay roughly 200 to $250 for each mailer like that. And sometimes we do it twice, sometimes we do it once. We usually will get a call. I'll usually get a call from one of the neighbors asking, this strategy probably brings 30% of my listings for a year. Um, so that's, that's a big piece that we're doing it for each single time we represent the seller. And sometimes when we represent the buyers, because I've noticed not all agents are doing that for their listings. And we send out a letter saying that we brought the buyers. And there's still many buyers because we were competing. We were in a multiple offer situation, which means there are buyers. For you, if you have no listings, for example, you can also say that the house was sold. You cannot say that you sold it. That's that's not allowed. It's a misleading. It's against the law. But you can say the house sold. You don't have to claim that it was sold by you. And then say there's still many buyers because it's sold over ask. There was multiple buyers. If you're interested, give me a call. Those are less chances that somebody will give you because they really like to approach someone who did sell that house, particular one that know the area. Sellers typically are uh, attracted to agents who is selling in the area, who is close, who is local, who knows the, the area. Even though we know as a real estate agent that sometimes that is not that uh, crucial for you to be able to sell the property. If you, even if you are not that close, you're still going to get, get it sold. But sellers are, are really uh, choosing their agent based on location and where that agent sells properties. So that's, that's a big piece of our uh, listing inventory is mailers to neighbors after we sell the property. Second source that produces a lot of listings for us is Google. Um, it's a Google page where we try to encourage our clients put reviews, which will bring your page up in a, in a Google search. That's a good one. And you're going to list all of your services that you do. You're going to upload pictures on a constant basis. Um, and uh, you're going to pay attention to your Google page. That's something that what, what gets measured gets done. So if you're going to pay attention to your Google page, it's going to grow and it's going to produce the calls. And also Google service ads. Uh, that's, the, that's another feature that Google provides. Basically, when you Google uh, realtor near me, you're going to see a couple of pictures of agents and then you click see more. You're going to get more uh, more agents and people that are looking to sell a property. They, they they could be Googling realtor near me and one of those pictures come up. The more reviews you have, the more chances you're going to get the call. But also like Google is helping your your ranking. So based on how many are reviews, how often you pick up the call from these uh, from these clients that call you and uh, how many pictures you upload and how active you are on the Google. So basically what you want to do, you want, you want to pick up those calls. Google doesn't charge you for these calls, local service ads uh, on Google. If you just Google that, you, you'll be able to, to put it up together. The, the Google doesn't charge you for it uh, up front. They only charge you per call. And sometimes you get a call that you can dispute. It's not a sale. It's not, it wasn't a client's call. It wasn't uh, your buyer or seller calling. It was, uh, it was somebody who tries to get your business. So you can dispute that because those calls are recorded by Google and Google can e easily dispute it. You can set a budget of a 500 to $1,000 a, a week, which seems high 
but you're never going to use it. You're going to get a one call a month or you're going to get two or three calls a month, but those are solid calls. Those are people that are not really looking for too much competition. They, ju they just need help with selling the property. So Google is a big one for us. We get calls from just the Google page on Google Maps and we get calls from Google local um, service ads. That's the name of that. It's going to take you some time to set it up. Uh, first, you need to have your Google page established. You're going to have to have some reviews. You're going to have to have some uh, credibility, some pictures, and then Google will, will let you have the Google local service ads. Uh, but you have to start somewhere. So pay attention to Google because that, uh, that helps bring and get some listings. And the third way we generate our listings is by making calls. And the lead source that we use for making calls is absentee owners. So this is a little bit of a longer play. This is not uh, you make a call and you go list. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a nurturing process. Sometimes you may get a call. You may make a call where somebody says, yeah, I'm actually interested in selling right now. But most of the time, it's going to be a little bit of a nurture play. It's going to take some more time. The way we get the lists from uh, uh, for these uh, absentee owner um, uh, uh, category is through Remind. Again, uh, we go to Remind. You can filter by owner occupied or uh, absentee owner in state or out of state. We select both and we pull the list. Remind even gives you a phone number so you can reach out and you can also mail. But that's a little bit expensive. You pay 70 cents at least per, per piece. Uh, or you just make a lot of calls. So uh, calls to absentee owners. Usually with absentee owners, it's a very easy conversation. Uh, they own that property. They don't live there. There's not too much emotion there. Sometimes there is. It depends. But a lot of times they could be that this is going to be an investor. And you can have a lot of conversation with these people regarding investments. Like, is this your rental? How long you owned it? Did you live in there? How many do you have? Is this the only one? Are you looking to sell? Or maybe you're looking to buy? When are you looking to buy? What kind of property are you looking to buy? So you can talk to them as investors. You can have a lot of conversation with them and kind of build report. And then you get an email. You put them on the you know, auto uh, follow-up that you get. Uh, um, you send them properties that are, that are similar to what they're looking for or just report on the property values nearby that condo or house that you were calling about. Um, if that's somebody who kind of inherited the property, they might be looking to sell faster because they don't need that because they are a state. Things like the absentee owners are a really good source of uh, just communicating and staying in touch. And you're going to be listing a lot of properties if you consistently call absentee owner for a long period of time. So there you have it. I got you. I give you three best lead sources that I use for listing properties. Um, again, listings are the name of the game because every time you list a property, you get sign calls, you get calls from uh, websites, uh, you get a bunch of buyer leads. Like every time I put up a listing, that's really good one. Uh, sometimes there's listings that don't generate as much. They're in the area. They're not as desirable. And the price might be a little bit too high for every sales price. Different listings bring different uh, amount of buyers. But the ones that bring a lot of buyers, I give out those uh, phone calls and clients to uh, team, uh, team members on our team. And uh, we get we get sales and these clients become our buyers. And then, you know, they start recommending. So this is like a snowball. And listings generate a lot of buyers opportunities too. So if you focus on listings, you get a lot of buyer calls as well. So it kind of works both ways. Uh, but still, um, I recommend focusing on your building a brand and getting buyers that are want to work with you. Uh, but this is also a good way. So there you have it. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a like or dislike if you don't like. Uh, hopefully you liked it and you're looking for more content. And if you're looking for more content, let me know what kind of content you're looking for. You can put it in the comments below. And then subscribe, of course, of course, why not? Um, it's a good content. I put in knowledge that I have for everything's for free. If you have any questions also, put them down below. Uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks so much.